Hi, my name's George and welcome to this week's Rational Thinking. This week we'll be discussing May's deal failing for a third time, Mario Draghi striking more dovish rhetoric, and the US having fairly weak data but being the biggest beneficiary of the safe haven rise. This week in Stirling, it was dominated by further Brexit headlines coming out of Parliament, where Theresa May's deal failed for a third time. Uh, this time, the margin was slightly uh, smaller, with 344 votes to 286, so a margin of 58, which is the smallest defeat uh, so far, but still it was far greater than expected. Um, the UK have now missed the EU deadline for the 22nd of May, which means we have until the 12th of April to find a solution whether we'll be staying in uh, and seeking a longer extension or whether we'll be leaving without a deal. Um, this came after the fact that May, as a carrot to the dissenters with her own party, said that she would resign if her deal was going to be backed. She announced this to the 1922 committee, but still she was not able to sway any of DUP members and some of ERG members still decided to dissent. Um, this comes after early in the week where lawmakers took control of, uh, of the process um, and despite this they still couldn't find anything to agree on. Out of the eight uh, indicative votes there, were no, uh, there was no consensus forming. Um, outside of this we did have one bit of data from the UK last week, it was fairly negative. Retail, se uh, retail sales figures fell to an 18 month low. Uh, down to minus 12 uh, from an, well, the expected figure of 5. Reason for this being that Brexit uncertainty is continuing to weigh on consumer confidence. In Europe, Mario Draghi continued to strike a fairly dovish tone, where he announced that it would be likely that there would be a further delay to any future interest rate uh, hikes in the Eurozone. Um, and this comes as a way of trying to meet the, Euro, the ECB's inflation target of 2%. Um, and this follows uh, from a fairly dovish month in terms of rhetoric for Draghi, where, he's, uh, where he actually cut the growth forecast in the Eurozone down to 1.1% from a previous expected figure of 1.7%. In the US, you had safe haven benefits despite fairly weak data uh, across the week. Um, GDP uh, in the fourth quarter actually slowed to 2.2%. And there was a quite a significant decline in benchmark US Treasury yields, which went down to 15 month lows. Despite these two fairly negative bits of data, the whole risk off attitude around global currencies at the moment meant that the US being the biggest safe haven currency was the big beneficiary of this. This week is another busy week in terms of currency markets. In the UK, headlines will continue to be dominated by what's coming out of Parliament. We have a series of parliamentary votes on the Brexit withdrawal, and we also have the second round of indicative votes. In Europe, we have two of the key uh, core uh, consumer price index numbers. First of all, the core number, which is going to come in at 0.9%, and then we have the index number, which is expected to remain at 1.5%. In the US, we have a lot of data coming out. Firstly, we have retail sales figures for February, which is expected to decrease to 0.4% from 1.1%. Then we have two manufacturing PMI data uh, from the ISM. The first one is the traditional number that's expected to come in at 54.5% from a 54.2% uh, previous. And then we have the non-PMI, um, uh, the non-manufacturing, which is going to come in at 587 uh, from a previous of 597 um, at the end of the week is, is the key number, which is the non-farm payroll number. Uh, that's expected to be a figure of around 175,000. And on the same day, we have the average hourly earnings release, which is expected to remain at 3.4%. Thank you for watching this week's uh, edition of Rational Thinking. As ever, if you have any issues or any queries on your currency requirements, especially in this particularly choppy environment, please feel free to get in touch at any time. We'd be happy to help.